all the details all the parameters all the things that needs to be like said and what is actually the mapping thing which i discussed in my older video so you will see everything uh, so let's get started so uh, starting with this uh, initial screen so this is the first screen uh, in this case i am using a, a software called eco cal so eco eco drones is a company which sells you uh, custom issues so basically you can use those issues for your custom projects uh, and if you want to convert your carbureted engine into a fuel injected one then you can use this uh, whole uh, set so this is the software which i use to convert uh, bajaj platina uh, from a carbureted bajaj platina to a fuel injected uh, one so this is the software which i use so starting with the initial screen you can see you have a lot of like indication gauge so these indicators basically show you the parameters which is real time so when you connect this um, software like with the ecu so suppose you have a bike and you have connected that ecu and your engine is running and when you connect that ecu to your pc or laptop you can see the uh, real time data on your computer so currently i have not connected the issue with my uh, pc so that's why you are not seeing anything in real time but simply just for demonstration i am telling you so this is the start screen so you can see rpm here so there are multiple gauges here so first is rpm map 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 stands for measure manifold absolute pressure tps that is throttle position sensor ecd is engine coolant temperature iat is intake air temperature lambda is your uh, o2 sensor's value okay spark spark is the angle at which the spark is being fired okay fuel pulse width i already uh, talked about in my older video so what is the pulse width uh, of the injector that is being shown here uh, this is your battery volts actually so your battery uh, uh, battery voltage is also uh, continuously monitored because your battery voltage only depend um, decides uh, like fuel pump will run or not so this is also important parameter so these data are shown in real time when you connect with your ecu now i'll show you what all things are needed to run a fuel injection system so you can see uh, in the uh, lower side of the window these are the um, different windows like in which there are different parameters that has to be set or calibrated so uh, starting with like servo motor you have idle controls you have you have global fuel enrichment you have start fuel you have after start warm up fuel you have steady state acceleration deacceleration performance wot wot means void open throttle altitude calibration advanced tuning for injection this is advanced tuning for ignition this is sensors calibration so all these things are to be calibrated to successfully run your engine uh, in a fuel injection mode so starting with servo motor it is not required for like every um, engine's uh, calibration servo motor is used so basically if you if you are using this uh, right by oi technology or if you are using um, say just, uh, just say idling air uh, automatic idle control then uh, you have to use this servo motor in our case we didn't use that so this is next idle control so you can see there are multiple things that has to be set so this is calibration this is stable okay stable motor pre uh, start position like if uh, so what happens in a fuel injected engine you have a stepper motor which varies the amount of air that is going to control the uh, intake uh, sorry idling rpm so you can set different things here so see what what it is showing you so nominal engine speed for idle depending on engine temperature so it's a table so these things are only called mapping okay so in this table it is calib what is calibrated see so this in in the top you can see degree celsius it's a engine temperature right engine coolant temperature so in this table basically you can set the rpm of idling so say this means at minus 30 degree engine temperature the engine rpm will be 1800 at minus 15 it will be 1800 at zero 
1800 at 20 degree celsius it will it will be 1700 at 40 degree it will be 1600 at 60 it will be like this so here i can change the values too so say at 85 degree i want my engine rpm to be 1200 only i can do this see i can i have changed this right at 100 i want to change it to say 1100 okay and then 1000 So, uh, like at increasing temperature, you want your engine to like idle at a uh, lower RPM so that it consumes less of fuel. So that's how you can set it. Now, this is a factor called global fuel enrichment. So this is the most important factor. So what happens when you try to calibrate a new engine? Basically, it takes time to calibrate. Okay, basically, it takes time to understand what what all things should be set in order to. Um, uh function that engine properly but what happens uh so if you want to start the engine and say you don't know the actual parameters to set this is a quick fix so so say you are uh, your current injector is injecting 1 millisecond of fuel every time okay at idling but when you set in one now what if what will happen the ECU is going to inject more amount of fuel. So this is one. It is going to multiply the amount of fuel by this factor. So this is a quick fix. What? Uh, so what happens? It basically makes your air fuel mixture very rich. So you can set it 0.2 also. Okay. You can set it 0.6 also. So depending. If zero point six, okay. So depending on the like uh, conditions, you can set this value to a different uh, value. So this is real time. So say if you are uh, connected with your engine, uh, you are uh, your ECU is connected with your PC. Then at in real time, if you change the value here, your value is going to reflect in your engine RPM. So if you uh, when your engine attains a temperature, then you can. Simply change the value, and you will see there will be a RPM difference because the fuel amount is being varied. So this is a quick fix. So uh, this is widely used. So this is global fuel enrichment factor. Now you have start fuel. So here you can see in this mapping, basically what we are doing, we are uh, defining the engine speed threshold for end of start. Okay. So at say Zero degrees Celsius, the RPM should be one zero two zero. Okay, and now you see in this table. So start fuel factor for cold start depending on engine start temperature. Like in my previous video, I already told you like so fuel injection systems are smart enough to understand uh, whether the, uh, uh, they they are in a cold condition or hot condition, and based on that they can adjust their fuel amount. So here you can see what is actually happening. So say you can see the uh, fact like. Uh, the tape you can see the table like it is gradually decreasing okay you can set this also but say at minus 25 what is happening like it is start fuel factor like 20 is being multiplied so 20 times the fuel is given than the normal uh, in the next one 0 14 10 12 20 15 37 40 so this is this lower value is the fuel factor which is being multiplied into the overall fuel value based on the temperature so see at 90 i you can calibrate you can put it to so what will happen uh, till the 60 say suppose your fuel value was uh, 20 milli 24 milliseconds now what will happen at 90 degree celsius it will be 12 milliseconds or 2 milliseconds okay so this is after start warm up fuel so after starting your engine needs to be warm up like it needs to attain its its temperature so this is the factor which is uh, you can see gets multiplied into the engine what it does is gradually when the engine gets heated up your fuel factor continuously gets reduced 
because engine is able to idle at its own after it gets its temperature but when cold engine is unable to uh, perform in uh, perform in its natural range so we can see uh, starting from 3 the value keeps on decreasing 3 2.75 2.56 so say at 10 degrees Celsius the fuel multiplication factor was 0.81 at 20 it is 0.59 at 30 it is 0.56 at 40 it's 0.5 60 0.9 and 90 0 it means when the engine goes to uh, 90 degree it doesn't need any extra amount of fuel to sustain idling it can sustain idling on its own and this is steady state so see this is the mapping which I was talking about so uh, this is the calibration table you can basically change the value so these are two tables okay this one is volumetric efficiency table and this is your load table okay the lower one see so what happens engine actually performs uh, uses two uh, different models to run so I will uh, just give a brief introduction so in lower rpms your engine in lower rpms your engine uses this uh, volumetric efficiency method so in this what it will do if you see here 0.66 this means that at 1200 rpm so you uh, you should read it like this so this is 1200 rpm this is 300 this is manifold absolute pressure this is pressure sensors value okay so at 300 uh, pascals or the pressure value and at 1200 rpm it is assuming that the volumetric efficiency is 66 percent okay and in this what it is assuming the engine uh, uh, volumetric efficiency is 68 percent so likewise you see there is a table defined so lower the uh, volumetric efficiency more the amount of fuel that will be injected so likewise you have the whole table but what happens uh, this is tps based uh, load mapping so this is different form of uh, technique that is used in your uh, ecu to run the engine so what happens at higher rpms the pressure values fluctuates very much and there is not a concrete reading that is coming from your ecu so what happens to um, to overcome that problem a load based table is used so what happens in this table if you see these these are rpm okay these are rpm and this is throttle position like throttle position sensor so say at 3.91 degrees of my throttle my assumed load load is 25% at 2000 rpm it is 27 percent so you keep on increasing the increasing the rpm your load first keeps on increasing and the load then decreases so you can see the table so at 99.99 percent throttle position my uh, load at 1400 rpm is 84 percent so based on that it will calculate the amount of fuel and inject into the engine so these two um, methods are being utilized when uh, running a fuel injection system into the engine these are different settings for acceleration okay so see uh, based on your acceleration there's a different factor called fuel uh, warm film uh, wall film dependent on load predicted so what happens when when the fuel is injected as you know the surface is not very smooth inside the throttle body or the intake port so what happens some of the fuel is evaporated and like there is a flow flow loss so to compensate that there is a different uh, so there is a factor that is being multiplied again into the um, fuel injection table so this is again a different calibration for to compensate that now you have deacceleration thing so you have a different table for wide open throttle wide open throttle means you are fully loading the engine like you're fully opening the throttle of the engine you have uh, fully uh, twisted your throttle and want maximum performance from the engine so you see there is uh, uh, this is throttle position okay and this is rpm and this is the uh, lambda sensor value so 
this means 0.84 means the mixture is rich okay so if you if i select this then th this means at 5600 rpm and at 39% of my uh, throttle uh, the mixture will be kind of rich 0.84 to compensate for the frictional losses okay and if you see there is a attitude calibration also because what happens when we go to higher altitudes there is a deficiency of oxygen and to compensate that you again need some more amount of or less amount of fuel because less than uh, less the oxygen so you need lesser oxygen uh, otherwise your engine will like uh, uh, be over flooded with the fuel and again that will cause some performance issues so this is the calibration for altitude and this is the calibration for injection so see this is my engine rpm okay so this is engine rpm and these are uh, angles so based on this this is the end angle so on on this only on this basis only your injection pulse width time is calculated so these are degrees so 112 320 320 252 these are the end of injection angle okay and here so you can define at what angle your intake valve is closing at what angle your uh, uh, injection is ending for start okay so everything you can um, like mention here so this is how your whole thing is calibrated and this is how fuel injection system works so this is a very complex system to uh, to calibrate an engine you need a lot of time a lot of hard work um, basically it takes years to properly um, calibrate a uh, IC engine so that was a brief intro that was a brief so that I could show you hope uh, you have got some understanding on fuel injection system thanks a lot